Betsy and Thomas here for the American Intelligence Media, and you know I'm going to say it, where we decode the Trump tweets like nobody else on the face of the earth. I want to take the last tweet that we worked on on the last one because I, I just want to savor it again. You know, sometimes when you taste truth in your mouth and you haven't tasted that truth, you just want to fully savor it. That's what truth does to you, you know? And that's mm -hmm. why we're addicted to it. So let's go over this one one more time. Mark Penn, quote, Why are there people from the Clinton Foundation on the Mueller staff? Why is there an independent counsel? To go after people and their families for unrelated offenses, Constitution was set up to prevent this stormtrooper tactics almost, close quote, a disgrace. Let's talk about those stormtrooper tactics. What does the deeper meaning of this have for you, Thomas? That is uh, Andrew Weissman. He is literally called the stormtrooper of lawyers. He invaded uh, the Trump transition team presidential records, which is illegal when the man wasn't there and they stole the records. Uh, that was stormtroopers. When they went into Paul Manafort's house in the middle of the night, who had been cooperating with him completely to steal his own personal records. That was a stormtrooper tactics. Those were Andrew Weissman. Uh, when they went after Gates, when they went after, these are stormtrooper tactics. Uh, Sally Yates has now been proven to be another stormtrooper for lying about the whole Michael Flynn thing. She's now been completely exposed. When uh, Mueller reveals these letters, uh, uh, not... Anytime there's a lull uh, and they don't have anything to do, they can make another leak from the independent counsel, the special counsel of Mueller, which is, of course, then makes it uh, should be closed. Too many leaks. Any leak. It's supposed to be secret. There's no secrets. Everything in the Mueller investigation has been revealed. So these letters that went back to June and then after that January and now only come out now... Uh, that's just to show what uh, is being underscored here by Trump quoting Mark Penn by saying that why is there an independent counsel? There's no legal reason there should be an independent counsel. It is unconstitutional for a president to obstruct justice with his underlings. Remember, the Department of Justice, the CIA, the FBI, even the FBI counterintelligence even the DOJ National Security Division, they all work for Trump. He cannot obstruct a dadgum thing. It is not possible. It is not constitutionally possible. We said this from the beginning. Yes, because if charges are raised against him, it has to come from an equal branch of government, and that would be Congress. And Mueller is not Congress. Right. They'd have to impeach him if there was a crime. Right. And that crime came before, and if the FBI and the CIA or uh, the Department of Justice had crimes on the president, it should have gone, if they, if they were afraid of taking it directly to the public and literally uh, taking it to Congress publicly, they could have just gone to the heads of the Judiciary Committee, they could have gone to the heads of the Intelligence Committee, depending upon what kind of crime it was. So, no, there's no such thing. You impeach a president. You cannot bring a criminal charge against a president with an independent uh, counsel, as he calls him here, which is really a special counsel. And as we pointed out, until Janet Reno expanded what was a law into a regulation and then uh, empowered that regulation, and then empowered that regulation of a special counsel to receive $100 million a year for any specific special counsel investigation, and also gave them all kinds of latitude and created a war between the Inspector General and the Office of Special Counsel. Because really, the Inspector General should be able to look at what even Special Counsel is doing, but because they are usually in panel a grand jury, which again, is un should be unconstitutional. Only two countries in the whole world still use such crazy things. That's a star chamber. That's an old British habit of making sure that the elite do not get prosecuted in the Well, that's here. who's all behind this. You know, it's not a surprise that we see these stormtrooper tactics. They've been used before in history. And really, have they ever really gone away? I think they've just sneaked into our government. And that's what they were laying out. They were infiltrating the executive branch through Obama, of course, even before then. But the enemy has now entrenched itself in the executive branch. And it is that enemy, which are your senior executive service 
people, your Serco folks, they are trying to overthrow the United States government and Donald Trump. And this is our enemy. That's why we like to call him SS Herr Mueller. Because he mentions, John, Mark Penn mentions that the Constitution was set up to prevent this correct just as you pointed out, there is no such thing. And as Trump is going to point out here, it is unconstitutional. Well, Mark Penn is saying it here, and Trump is using his words to underscore what he believes. And then stormtrooper tactics almost, no, it is absolutely stormtrooper tactics. But he can't come out right out and say no, that. No, he's know? using somebody he's using else's words. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he's pointing at the Clinton Foundation, Mark Penn is, because not only Jonathan Weiner, not only Terry McAuliffe, uh, not only the money that was shuffled to Andrew McCabe's wife, Jill McCabe. All this is Clinton money. Not only the uranium 145 million, not only the the Juster Clinton Sustainability Growth Fund, another 200 million, all of these things, Clinton Foundation, Clinton Foundation, Clinton Foundation. Remember, there is a new Clinton Foundation scam investigation going on. There's a new FBI Clinton investigation into her emails going on. We don't know that any of them have produced anything. We'll have to find out if Jeff Sessions is uh, still, you know, Rip Van Winkle and dead asleep or whether some of his lawyers may actually well, be able to uncover crimes that any uh, first-year law student could prosecute them with. No, Jeff Sessions is senior executive service. And all these people you're, look, you're naming, they're all affiliated with that organization, which is the rogue government in our government, or the army. Some people call it Obama's army. That's right. And uh, also, when Mark Penn mentions unrelated offenses and going after those people, those would be uh, Flynn, Gates, Manafort, Papadopoulos, uh, Carter, Cohen, uh, and then uh, Caputo, and, and many, 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 many other people in the Trump team that they have harassed through Mueller's special counsel investigation that have been completely... Uh, absurd and have nothing to do with what the original charges were, which I pointed out, we always pointed out, there can be no such thing as conspiracy against the United States government. There's no such charge. And which the company, the Russian company, is now in court fighting Mueller saying there is no such charge. And we didn't even exist at that time that you're charging us with those things. And none of those people worked for us. None of the 13 Russians and none of the three companies had anything to do with Russian meddling. As we pointed out, that was the Queen, through her Privy Council, through Sir Jeffrey Patty, through SCL, which he founded, which is a PR, it's like an opposition uh, 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 corporate intelligence group, much like Fusion GPS, much like Manafort, Stone, Kelly, and and the Black, uh, much like many of these groups that are really affecting elections and rigging elections. And and we've talked about that recently. But anyway, the point is, is that it was the Queen. And it was the Queen through uh, Sir uh, Dear Love, who was the instructor through all of this for Christopher Steele, who created the dossier, which is, of course, the illegal document paid for with funds stolen from taxpayers and misused, sent through Perkin Coy to pay Fusion GPS for this fake dossier, which then drove the entire counterintelligence investigation, the Carter Page investigation, drove all their investigations, a fake dossier, which they knew they actually helped create in America and send over to Britain. And then Britain got caught with their pants down, and now many people are resigning. So when we say Clinton Foundation, Alexander Downer, He's down. He was the guy who sent the false information about Papadopoulos through his Clinton Foundation contact, Jonathan Weiner, at the State Department. Not to mention the Australian and New Zealand governments that were giving money to the Clinton campaign. Well, they'll say $27 million to the Clinton Foundation directly channeled through uh, Alexander Downer, but it was $80 million yeah. over a number of years. And now we find that New Zealand also was in on that and gave to Clinton Foundation during the election, 17.3 million. And we find out that Merkel herself in Germany gave over $5 million in September of 2016 during the election to Hillary Clinton. And two days later, she comes out and says that her favorite leader in the world is Angela Merkel. In other words, if you pay $5 million, you get Hillary to come on and tell the world that you're the best uh, leader in the world. So... That's why he's referring to the Clinton Foundation. That investigation could open up, and that is beyond the investigation of Michael Horowitz, 
who also should have discovered all of these irregularities, but we'll see about that because June 11th has been set up as the date for the Senate to start their investigation into these things with their questioning. And so we can start to sit back and get the popcorn ready. It's not just going to be cheesecake time. It's going to be popcorn. We're going to be watching hours and hours of testimony. Wow. That was an amazing decode on that little tweet. We got so much information out of that. I can't wait to see what you do on the next one, which I'm going to read. <laughs> there are actually two. They're tied together because he's got that dot, dot, dot thing going at the end in the beginning. This is my 500th day in office, and we have accomplished a lot. Many believe more than any president in his first 500 days. Massive tax and regulation cuts, military and vets, lower crime and illegal immigration, stronger borders, judgeships, best economy and jobs ever, and much more. We had repeal and replace done, and the saving to our country of $1 trillion dollars. Except for one person, but it is getting done anyway. Individual mandate is gone and great, less expensive plans will be announced this month. Drug prices coming down and right to try. Woo, too much winning. No, we can't have too much winning. So all those are correct. And he's saying this because the mainstream media isn't reporting on any of this. They are, you know, trying to find uh, anything they can criticize them on. But actually, in fact, we'll even see that the Wall Street Journal up here had to get aboard. They cannot any longer ignore uh, Trump economics because it is just too much winning. Now, why does he mention the one trillion and repeal and replace? We had it done except for one person, an obstructionist, who we all know that person's name. That's not a big decode. But the point is, is that would have been $1 trillion in this year's budget. That's the $1 trillion that they are blaming him going into debt with the U.S. Federal Reserve. Who cares about that debt? That debt is false. That debt is fake. That debt is horrible. And once we regain the gold that they've stolen and shifted out to central banks to use for all of their audits and their fake uh, asset uh, bottom line nonsense, what's going to happen is that trillion dollars would have offset. We would have had a balanced budget for the first time in how long? Plus, he keeps mentioning that we have yet to calculate the gains from not only not paying out in losses in, ter in tariffs and in trade, but what we're going to gain by putting tariffs on. So what we're going to have at the end of the year is probably more than a balanced budget, but he intended this year for that $1 trillion to go into the military so that we don't get manipulated by Britain, by France, by Germany, by the Five Eyes, England, Canada, Australia, and supposedly our friends, who we now find out are donating to the Clinton campaign during the campaign, uh, to Clinton during the campaign to her foundation for pay to play. It only takes two days to get an endorsement from Clinton. We've proven that now with Angela Merkel and with the AIDS and planting trees in Africa, no trees were planted. And all the Clinton Foundation did was they got one of their friends in a pharmaceutical company to lower the price of the AIDS drugs in Africa. And they were paid over $100 million for that from New Zealand and Australia. I think they got ripped off. And not only that, it was pay for play. They expected her to be the queen of North America and that NAFTA was going to go on and that everybody could get in NAFTA and everyone could just rip us off. So he is the best. I want him to only add one thing to his repertoire. When he says in history, he should say modern history. And then he would be absolutely could not be questioned 100% accurate with what he's saying here. Yes, in modern history, there has been no president that has produced the results of this businessman. And, you know, it was even John Lennon who said what we needed was a businessman to run this country because we are losing. Hey, look, you know, let's go back to this. We had repeal and replace done except for one person. I, I don't think it's fair to assume that everybody out there knows who that one person is. The biggest rhino in Congress. I think you need to name it. Paul Ryan. He lied, he lied, he lied. He said he was going to do this. And then he was caught in a conversation with the leadership and it, it, well, Trump says one, he was the leader, but remember, it's also the leadership of the Senate. It's also the minority leadership. They all sat around and they caught them in a conversation where Paul Ryan said, Trump actually believed my lies that I was trying to get something done with Obamacare. Mm -hmm. That's why he's leaving because he's been caught as a liar and no one trusts him anymore and they probably will kick him out before he even resigns. Well, another one that needs to get the heck out is that Trey Gowdy, Mr. All Talk No Do. Well, we just posted 
you just posted on Truth News Headlines, a beautiful thing, uh, uh, Nunes, explaining why Trey said what he said. And basically, he was saying, Trey's a traitor. Why are we even listening to him? I mean, sometimes he does some good things, you know, but he, it was for very specific things. Man, it he, wasn't to really move the agenda forward. Okay, the next tweet. This is the best time ever to look for a job. This is a quote from James Freeman of the Wall Street Journal. Well, let's go back. What were you about to say about uh, Paul Ryan? I think that Jim Jordan should be the new uh, head of the Congress because he's honest. We need to have an honest person once in one of these leaderships. And by the way, why hasn't Mitch McConnell stepped down since his wife is completely compromised, his whole family is compromised, and he's compromised? This is what Trump is insinuating here. Because they, that we're all walking around, nobody's paying attention. And they know it. They know that the average American citizen does not know that married to the Secretary of Transportation and her and her family have got China ships and boats industry, and she is totally compromised. Completely compromised. I mean, it's like we're... Just a week ago or two two weeks ago, she got another huge deal for her she, family. She really needs to go. Obviously, that was rammed down our throats. How could he be continuing on in that leadership position? When Chow he is, is her name. Yeah, when he's such a liar. And then uh, drug prices coming down. Why does Trump mention this? Not only are they coming down, no one else has ever put a dent in the pharmaceutical company lobby and in the pharmaceutical company control of our bloodstream in America, which is killing people through the opiates. So he is going after these drug companies. He's going after the people who own them. He's going after the fact that they're killing us on purpose. And who is it that I just mentioned inserts themselves as a toll booth, as a tax between pharmaceutical companies and foreign countries and get, gains billions of dollars from this, more money than anybody even knows? And Jonathan Weiner, when he stepped down from the State Department, said that the Clintons haven't made $2 billion in their foundation. They've made over $40 billion. He was there, and he was working for APCO Worldwide, and he saw these things, and he saw the amounts of money. Clinton Foundation steps in, and they make money in, uh, became, being middlemen between the pharmaceutical companies and the way they sell and what they sell drugs to. For well, and to well, whom? Well, the Clinton Foundation is nothing but a RICO thing that's happening. You know, I don't know why we can't just go in all these billions of dollars you talk about the Clinton Foundation having. Just go in there with this asset forfeiture seizure. Uh, the next tweet, this is the best time ever to look for a job. A quote from James Freeman of the Wall Street Journal. Yeehaw! The Wall Street Journal, the one of the top enemies of Trump. And this is in contradistinction to people after days of trying to ignore the good statistics on, on labor, on unemployment, on jobs, on everything, on GDP. Some of the highest uh, projected 4.8, hello? That People laughed when Trump said he would get it to 4. They laughed and they said he was an insane man during the campaign. Everyone, everyone. There was no economist that did not laugh at Trump when he said 4.0. Oh, we're at 4.8. Anyway. <laughs> The point is, is uh, he's quoting the Wall Street Journal, and so they have to eat their own words. But are any of them really eating humble pie? I look a little deeper in that tweet. I see uh, the POTUS saying, hey, we need everybody back to work. We have a lot of jobs, and we can't fill them all. Because there are a lot of people that are unemployed, and there's a lot of underemployment. And because of the way the stats were working with the Obama administration, they're not being counted in the unemployment count. I feel that this tweet was a call out, hey, we've got jobs. Come back into the labor force. I agree with you on that. Uh, I also think this is addressed to those uh, 36,000 people in the federal government that he let go of. How about the senior executive service employees that, are, that may find themselves with a dollar salary, a dollar a year salary? Maybe this is a good time for them to start looking for a job. Those ten thousand need to start uh, hitting the street and looking for a job because when some of these things come down, there's going to be so many of them that have to leave because they're compromised. Because the next sets of inspector generals would go after them if they remained in the government. That's the reason so many people jump ship as soon as these things went down because they can't be investigated by the Inspector General. Okay, the next tweet. As has been stated by numerous legal scholars, I have the absolute right to pardon myself, 
But why would I do that when I have done nothing wrong? In the meantime, the never-ending witch hunt led by 13 very angry and conflicted Democrats and others continues into the midterms. Whoa, that one is so packed with information. <laughs> if you miss anything, I'll jump right in. But he... <laughs> good, good, good. But, you see... What he's talking about is those two letters. The two letters from the beginning said that Mueller's investigation was unconstitutional. It is impossible for him to obstruct justice. And that even if he did, he can't be held as a sitting president for small criminal actions, especially since they don't exist. And he did nothing wrong, which he always points out. And when it was the other side that actually was doing it, and that's who they should be investigating. But when he says he can pardon himself, that's because, let me explain this. People don't understand. When you... When I was a principal or a superintendent, I had laws that governed me for immunity. So I could do all kinds of things that other people in the school, if they did, they would be charged for. But because I was a government employee working in a specific position with specific liability coverage, then technically I cannot be included in lawsuits and crimes. For the president, that's times a billion. Executive privilege allows him to basically get away with murder, as we saw with Obama, as we've seen with the Bushes, as we've seen with Clinton. They committed murder, mass murder, and yet no one even blinks an eye. No one went to war. Why were they dropping bombs? No one blinks an eye. Because there are immunities involved in the president. So can he pardon himself? First off, that's stupid. He can't be convicted. He can be held in contempt of Congress. He can be held... Uh, for impeachment charges, but he cannot be charged with a crime because he could he could pardon himself. He's making it look so absurd that for this reason alone, Mueller and his whole gang and seventeen million dollars and the lives they ruined is stupid. and continue to ruin because yes. they're frankly ruining my life because I have to get here every day and decode these tweets because Americans need to wake up and because where is the U.S. military? We have proven without, beyond a shadow of a doubt in all the latest drops we've had that there are domestic and foreign enemies that need to be arrested or whatever the military is going to do on foreign grounds. I'm telling you, all the way up to the queen, you're talking about your crown agents, you're talking about your Chatham House, your privy council, you've got your dear loves, and what's that other guy, the patty, we call him patty cake around here. Mm -hmm. All this nonsense, this needs to stop. And who is their henchman? Who do you think the Nazis would put in charge over here as their henchman? Well, S.S. Herr Mueller, Mueller, his name is Mueller, people, wake up. Mueller, when you see his name, see 911 right yeah. And all these investigations that should have happened when he was in the position as the head of the FBI for 12 years, when he was basically just covering the crimes of Obama. And then Comey came in, his number one student, the same. The, these guys are like, uh, they're twins, okay? How could they, po how could Mueller possibly have any objectivity in relationship to Comey? How could he have given him immunity, well, he which he can't. has yet to tell anybody? Everybody's been leaked. Everything's been leaked except for the fact that Comey was given immunity before he ever testified before Congress as one of the first acts of the special investigation. Now, let me also say about this tweet. This midterm thing is a big deal. This special counsel better not affect the midterms in any way, shape, or form. Since the time of Mueller and the FBI, the FBI has been doing nothing but covering their own crimes and every once in a while going after a high profile person like, hmm, what woman could I go after that's high profile that really didn't do anything more than every banker and broker in New York does? Hmm. Okay, I got it. It's Martha. But here's the this thing. This is who they here, charge. The they charge a mafia guy. Who didn't know he was a criminal? Why doesn't his whole family go to jail? They go after Martha Stewart? What, didn't she fold the linen properly? Oh, my God. These guys are so criminal. Now, let's hit exactly what and you said. And the Department of Justice, could they... Have you seen anything that's come out of the Department of Justice? Anything? with Nothing. All, nothing. That hasn't Do, been rescinded. How many How many employees are at the Department of Justice? How many? That Thousands. I know of 117,000. What do they do there? Do they Cover just sit around? Crimes. Yes, that's what they do. They are there to cover up the crimes that the FBI and the CIA, which all rolls back. I know we can go the long way or we can go the shortcut. Back to the queen to cover up the fact that America is still under British rule. 
and the White House goes for it, hook, line, and sinker. I mean, they are the lapdog of the monarchy and whoever the prime minister okay. is. But let's look at the midterms. Okay. Why was Michael Horowitz appointed? To see if Comey had done anything wrong politically or there had been any partisanship between the DOJ and the FBI during the elections with what? Hillary Clinton's emails because, oh, poor Comey came out and told the world that she had committed, uh, that she had done this and that it was, uh, he, with Loretta Lynch's help, it was uh, downgraded to a matter instead of an investigation because he says there was an investigation. Everybody else says there wasn't. He says he uh, waited until they interviewed her before he exonerated her. Everyone else can see the documents to show that William Priestep, Andrew McCabe, Lisa Page, everyone had their input on his exoneration words. Those weren't his words. He was, uh, he was, he's an idiot, basically. But anyway, the point is, is he interrupted in the midterms. And so why was he actually fired? Look at Ro Rod Rosenstein's list of the reasons that Rod Rosenstein and Jeff Sessions said that Comey should be fired. And remember, they wrote the letter. It, yes, it was Trump who said, hey, this guy is terrible. He's terrible on Russia. He's terrible on the emails. Uh, give me some justification for firing this guy. They wrote a letter, right? Fired? That's all they're going to do to him? Well, Fire? that's the whole point. He needed to get him out because of the crimes that he was watching Comey commit right in front of him. Lie, lie, lie to him three times. Lie, lie, lie in testimony three times. There's no investigation of Trump. Yes, there was. There was a counterintelligence operation. Call it an investigation. Call it the uh, uh, crossfire hurricane. Call it whatever you want to call it, but it certainly was there. So Comey interfered with midterm. We told you from the beginning that Mueller was appointed so that for six years he could continue this investigation so that it would go through to make sure that Trump did not win the next election, but of course upset the midterms. And all the while, the queen is there meddling in our government and our elections. Okay, now let's go to the next tweet, which is China already charges a tax of 16% on soybeans. Canada has all sorts of trade barriers on our agricultural products. Not acceptable. Let's remember, and let's first off preface the fact that when we say the queen, we mean the crown, the British crown. Now, soon she could hand it to someone else. I'm sorry, and, but if you're in charge, you're responsible for everybody underneath you. So if she doesn't know about it, she needs to wake up or she needs to turn the crown over to Charles or to William to get somebody at the helm that knows what's going on. That is no excuse. And take the crown off the head of Sir Geoffrey Patty and be responsible. Because when you say Canada, you're saying the crown. Don't forget that. So when Canada has all sorts of trade barriers in our agricultural products, no, that is a rip-off. It's just like the aluminum and steel. It's like everything that they're doing. We don't even know what they do with this stuff after they buy it. We're simply being ripped off. China already has a charge of 16% on soybeans. Soybeans is the number one thing that we love to send out of the country because it's so easy to produce. And China uses a lot of soybeans, but they don't want to take our product without a 16%. So why don't we put 16% on everything that they send in? Oh, no, we're not allowed to put a zero. We can't put one. We can't put two. We can't even put a tariff on them. No tax, no tariff, no hindrances to China. Who created that? Bill and Hillary Clinton. They got them into the World Trade Organization. They made them uh, most favored nation trading status when they were one of the worst civil rights offenders in the entire world. They got on the board of Walmart, which was a paid position. They can't stop getting enough money, those Clintons, can they? But anyway, China needs to be stopped because when you stop China, you stop the Clintons also. So it's unacceptable. He's just going to keep hammering on this until he wakes us up to fake trade. Okay, folks? This is fake trade. And it's the stupidest fake trade. He yelled at people in the uh, during the election how stupid they are. Stupid, 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 stupid. They are. No. They're stupid, but they're stupid for a reason. Because they're making money under the table. Because they're part of the network. I mean, look at Justin it's, Trudeau. He's just having a crybaby fit up there because he doesn't know how to deal with a real man, Trump. He's like, oh my God, what are you doing putting this out on us? We, how are we going to make money? We can no longer be the middleman. And that's how Canada was making money off the United States. Goes into the next tweet. You can't lose at this point in any trade deal. If you, if you stuck with what you had... 
okay? But if you changed one thing to our benefit, how could you lose? How could you lose? The company, the countries that buy from us are obliged to us. They are beholden to us. Why should they call the tune that we dance to. That's because we had wimpy Obama up there just allowing anybody to F us, you know? He wanted what he wanted, and no one can tell what he wanted, except unless his intent was to kill two million people and put 60 million people into refugee status and to cause the migrants to cluster into Turkey so they could then attack Europe. And, I don't know. I can't <clears throat> figure out any other uh, any other reason. And we don't mean to call out. We're not calling out the good citizens of any of these countries. We realize that you are being terrorized by your government just as much as we are. And that's why we all need to unite globally and take this down. Next tweet. Farmers have not been doing very well for 15 years. Mexico, Canada, China, and others have treated them unfairly. By the time I finish trade talks, that will change. Big trade barriers against U.S. farmers and other businesses will finally be broken. Massive trade deficits no longer. Again, he's not going to let up on this because these are the things that make a balanced budget. Money gets to people and that changes votes. When he gave a tax break, it changed the vote uh, topology. When he puts money back in our pockets to business, it changes the job topology. He keeps changing things because he knows it's through money that you're going to do it. Now, let's just point out a few things here. The United States government pays subsidies to have farmers in America throw away their produce. That's how bad it is. And that's why this whole, the whole farmer bill in the Congress is really very deceptive. I don't want to go into explaining it in detail. We don't have time now. Let's just say farmers, small farmers have been ripped off for years. It's gone to big farmers. And then those big farmers actually paid subsidies in many cases to not actually not grow anything. Why? Because the, the trade deals caused them to get ripped off. So if the, tr- if the price wasn't right, they literally destroyed the grain. They destroyed the milk. They destroyed these pro- the produce, right? This is absurd. This also comes from Canada and specifically from Canada and, and also from all other nations, but also from China because China has a need for all of this stuff. And now we hear from what he's saying with the trade deal with China that the number, one of the number one things is that the farmers are going to be able to sell to China everything they can grow no longer destroying food. So let's remember that the farmers have been ripped off by our own government by our trade programs that have limited their ability to ever make any money. So the trade talks change all of that. Big trade barriers against U.S. farmers. That's what he's talking about. And other businesses. That's the aluminum. That's the steel. That's anything we produce. That's our uranium. Why are Why is Russia and Britain handling our uranium? That's absurd. It's our uranium. Why do they use our uranium enrichment facilities? Those are our facilities. Well, we paid for two-thirds of them. No, actually, if you track it back, it's the Queen's. Well, the Queen owns Urenco, along with the Dutch and the Germans, and they own one-third. They put in one billion for the Urenco plant in Eunice, New Mexico. We're we're just a feeding trough for the Queen what America is. This is why we're being fleeced and why nothing's ever really gotten better here. We continually watch our economies and and, and everything around us decline, our education decline, the way our health is declining, agriculture, all of it's declining because they are feeding off of us and we have to put a stop because it is a war of borders. It's not just the borders of our country. It's the borders of the skin in your body that they want to inject their vaccinations, that they want to put their poisons. So we have to have a war to protect borders from our skin to our psyche and our brains. We got to, the brainwashing to the borders of our country. Electromagnetic frequency fog. Yes. 5G, wireless transmissions, microwave transmissions, millimeter transmissions. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. You're right, Betsy. Where's the borders? They're penetrating the borders of our skin. So they want to know what you think. They've got their electronic devices that are motivating us and keeping us affixed to them. We can't even have any creative thinking because of these things. And the Walter C. Uh, Richard C. Walker patent that we call the Internet of Things. It's uh, it's it's they want to remote control, aggressive remote control from a distance, even your very physical body. This is the plan. This is a patent that we uncovered. It is absurd when you're talking about how 
corporations have decided that Americans don't even exist anymore. They all uh, America got and its its uh, products, its resources, its manufacturing all got sold out a long time ago. So what was left? Oh, we're going to turn it into a medical industry where we create illness and then we create nothing but an industry to heal that well, illness. Well, that's a farming of the human body. And now they're farming our souls and our spirits. And now they want our children to go to these schools where there's, where where every every other day there's another shooting. Uh, you can't protect our children. They don't want to protect our children. Is well, anyone they, even speaking they, of if, protecting if the children? If we had a country that was based on truth and honesty, we would not be putting these horrible vaccinations in our children and our babies. But okay, we have one more tweet to go. And this is a good one to end on because it really is a summation of the first one we started with. The appointment of the special counsel is totally unconstitutional. And that is in bold, I mean not bold, but in caps. So I think that we should pay attention to that word. Despite that, we play the game because I, unlike the Democrats, have nothing, I've done nothing wrong. He is innocent. We said that all along. They can shoot all day long at him. They can try to burn him as a witch. He's not going to burn. They can try to see if he'll... Uh, if he's heavier than a duck, and if he sinks, he he is he's lighter than the duck. <laughs> they made him walk through fire. No problem. He walked through the fire. Uh, what else can they possibly do to him? Is there any other accusation they can make about anybody he even knows or anyone he ever knew? I don't think so. So it's a game. And what he's pointing out, and the reason he puts in all caps, which is yelling on the internet, unconstitutional is because the letters that came out in June and now and then in January, which have now been revealed, the full content of those letters, unless his lawyers revealed them, and if they're willing to swear that they didn't, then the Mueller investigation's over. Comes down to one or the other. Simple as that. Because they were revealed in toto, and they can now arrest the person who revealed it at the news agency because it's national security. This is a national security issue. If the Department of Justice was doing their job, they'd go arrest the person who supposedly leaked this, and they'd close down the Mueller investigation. But who's going to do the arresting if the Department of Justice isn't doing its job? And that's why he doesn't care. He says, we play the game because over time, the Trump effect is going to make it happen that the very things they accuse him of, their own crimes, their projection, it's called, is going to come back on them. Their crimes, their very same crimes are going to come back on them. The very things that Maxine Waters yells at Trump is going to come back on her. Gregory Meeks and, uh, and Al Green and Paul Ryan and Mitch McConnell and uh, Schumer and Pelosi. Yell all you want. Matter of fact, yell more because I think it was, uh, I love the way that Huckabee speaks sometimes. He says, thank God for Pelosi for the Republican Party because every time she opens her mouth, it gets them votes.